Sophie Gregoire Trudeau has come a long way from her humble upbringing, from starting out as a bubbly TV reporter to becoming an eating disorders advocate and author. Sophie's transformation has truly been something to see. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau was an only child with a happy upbringing. Her father was a stockbroker and her mother was a nurse. The family started out in saint adele Quebec and later moved to Montreal. Sophie was well-rounded and a good student. She also loved playing sports and being outside. However, even with her idyllic upbringing, Sophie developed bulimia in her teens. She once wrote in an Instagram post, I was happy and thriving in some areas of my life as a young adult, but I was struggling deeply with an eating disorder. No one had shown me how to sit with the pain I was dealing with. Sophie would later become an advocate for those dealing with eating disorders. My path has been of having enough self-love to be able to offer it to other people around me. Sophie and Justin Trudeau met through his younger brother, Michel, who was her classmate. However, she lost track of him until she got older. Then one day, she saw Justin, whose father was a former Canadian prime minister, in the news. She told her mom she wanted to date him, but her mother laughed it off. In an interview with life coach Erica Diamond, Sophie recalled, One year later, I co-hosted a charity function and Justin was coincidentally my co-host. When we met again, I reminded him that I knew his brother, Michel. There was definitely a physical and emotional connection. We flirted. But Justin dodged an email from her and they didn't reconnect again until bumping into each other in the street. After they took turns playing hard to get, they finally went on a date. In her interview with Erica Diamond, Sophie recalled Justin saying, I've been waiting for you 31 years. You're going to be my wife. We're going to have a family together. Sophie started studying commerce at Montreal's McGill University but soon changed her major to communications. She dabbled in advertising before realizing radio and television school might be right for her. She told Diamond, I had always felt my communication skills were my best asset. The moment I stepped foot into school, I knew I was home. I felt most like myself. I had found my calling. Once she embarked on a career in broadcasting, Sophie quickly climbed the ranks and ultimately became an entertainment reporter. Justin Trudeau was taken with the successful and fun Sophie. He sang her praises in a McLean's interview before their wedding, telling the outlet, First of all, you've seen the pictures. She's absolutely gorgeous. But there's this sweetness to her and a realness with this edge of an intelligence that is very, very strong and anchored in some values that are unassailable. Sophie was sometimes recognized by fans due to her TV work, but dating Justin Trudeau boosted her notoriety to another level. She told McLean's, Wherever we go, in a restaurant or on the street or on a ski hill or even traveling, people come up to see us and they're just so friendly. Their wedding took things up yet another notch, catapulting her into the upper echelon of Canadian society. Former politicians and sons of prime ministers attended the Montreal wedding. Despite a rainy forecast, the sun came out and Sophie kept her trademark exuberance intact even on her wedding day. According to the CBC, she yelled at the crowds, I'm the luckiest woman in the world. Despite Sophie's optimism, Justin's mother Margaret took care to prepare her new daughter-in-law for the darker side of fame. Margaret told McLean's, I have tried to prepare Sophie for, how can I put it, the pain and hurt the media may cause her. I'm telling her that it'll be there because I've been there, I've been through it myself. Before their wedding, Justin Trudeau told McLean's that he was ambivalent about entering the world of politics, and a decision on the matter would take some time. Sophie also told McLean's at the time, I have total faith that I will be able to handle it and adapt. It only took three years for the couple to take the plunge. Justin Trudeau became a member of the Parliament of Canada in 2008. He was re-elected in 2011 and became leader of the Liberal Party in 2013. Then, in 2015, when the Liberal Party won control of the House of Commons, he became Prime Minister, a position he still holds in 2023. Canadians don't use the term First Lady, but the Prime Minister's wife is still heavily scrutinized. Sophie came under fire for her wardrobe at least twice. The first time occurred when she borrowed a $5,700 Oscar de la Renta dress for a Vogue shoot. It happened again when the Trudeau family was accused of looking, quote, too flashy in India, according to Outlook. Kids were part of the plan since Justin and Sophie's first date. The couple welcomed children Xavier James in 2007, Ella Grace Margaret in 2009, and Hadrian in 2014. Sophie told Erica Diamond about the deep impact motherhood had on her, saying, I literally had an out-of-body experience while breastfeeding. That we have a responsibility to save every child and save each other. It made me feel closer to everybody on this planet. 
In an interview with Sorry Girls, Sophie insisted she's just like any other mom. Reflecting on their historic home, Rideau Cottage, she said, Sometimes when people say it's so unique, yes, of course, but we're just a family and we're just trying to live our lives. Now she's going out of her way to show she's committed to her children even amid her separation from their father. Sophie Gregoire Trudeau has been open about her past with bulimia for years. In 2011, before her husband Justin Trudeau had become prime minister, she was already carving out a space for herself in the eating disorder advocacy arena. She told Erica Diamond, In my teen years, I suffered with bulimia, an eating disorder, and mental illness. I was very conscious of it. I read about bulimia, and I knew I was suffering from it. So I know what kind of suffering that these people are going through. She credits her recovery to mentors and speaking to family and friends, according to a news release from Scotiabank. Furthermore, Sophie frequently urges people to talk about their eating disorders as a first step to getting better. She said in the press release, "...every individual suffering from an eating disorder is different, and a multidisciplinary therapeutic approach is essential for full recovery." She also speaks about broader gender-related issues, urging followers and fans to speak out even when it's uncomfortable. Sophie wrote in an Instagram post, I'm calling on you to stand up for what's right, to call out sexist jokes, and to condemn violence whenever and wherever you encounter it. Women, girls, men, boys, and gender-diverse people must face this challenge together." While Sophie has always been open and vulnerable in interviews, this quality has proven transformative in her position as the prime minister's wife. While some political spouses try to shrink into the background, she prefers to be an open book, even when it comes to sharing details of couples therapy with the public. Shortly after Justin Trudeau was sworn into Canada's top governmental job, the couple was photographed staring passionately into each other's eyes in a photo shoot for Vogue. However, not everyone was happy with the photo, with Chatelaine writing, "...the way Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and his wife Sophie Gregoire Trudeau gaze at each other has become a bit of a political punchline." It turns out this wasn't just a pose for fashion's sake, but a serious exercise they learned in couples therapy, Sophie told The Globe and Mail. This might have been the first time a Canadian prime minister's marriage therapy was up for discussion, especially so soon after being sworn in. But on closer inspection, the couple has always been open about their cheesy tendencies. After Trudeau confessed to Sophie on their very first date that he wanted to marry her, he told McLean's, "...we both burst into tears because we're both such big, sensitive souls, big, tender hearts." The Canadian public had become acquainted with Sophie's quirky side thanks to the couple's Vogue shoot. Soon after, in 2016, Sophie went viral worldwide for breaking into an impromptu song during a tribute to Martin Luther King Jr. in Ottawa. This is not planned, trust me. People couldn't help but notice that the song had little to do with civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr., not to mention Sophie was no Celine Dion. The Toronto Star opined that she'd hit new highs and lows with the a cappella performance, while a writer from Vice said they were offended and confused by the tribute. Before the couple's bombshell separation announcement, Sophie shared great news. She had a book deal with Penguin Random House Canada. She'd publish her first book, Closer Together, Knowing Ourselves, Loving Each Other, in spring 2024. A picture book was to follow in 2025. Sophie planned to continue her mental health advocacy with the release of Closer Together, complete with interviews with experts on why humans think, act, and feel the way they do. As she told her Instagram followers, the book deal marked a big moment for Sophie, not to mention an opportunity to differentiate herself from her husband. In fact, Justin Trudeau didn't post about his wife's big literary break at all. Instead, he was busy with official visits to South Korea and Japan, according to his Instagram posts. This was par for the course, as Sophie had attended fewer and fewer state events with her husband in recent years, The Guardian reported. Soon after Sophie's book announcement, relationship red flags and hints of trouble gave way to a bona fide breakup announcement. The announcement came through the couple's individual Instagram accounts, captioned in both English and French. The statement insisted the couple would remain close as a family, even as Trudeau's political party deleted Sophie from its website, as reported by Politico. Some were blindsided by the split. Justin Trudeau had only just posted an Instagram tribute to his wife on May 28, 2023, writing, "...every mile of this journey together is an adventure. I love you, Soph. Happy anniversary." Less than three months later, the couple was now calling it quits. Sophie is now adapting to yet another transformative role, co-parenting with Trudeau. The couple embarked on a vacation with their kids in British Columbia only days after their separation became public. 
When Sophie ushers her children back to school, she'll be beginning a new chapter of her own life as well. And she could make a lot of money in the process. Without the ethical constraints of her husband's political career, it's possible she could snap up publishing and entertainment deals a la her acquaintance Meghan Markle. What I know is that I'm here to serve and I want to make a difference. After quitting her broadcast career when her husband got into politics, Sophie mostly volunteered while picking up some cash from speaking gigs. But now that she'll no longer be beholden to political customs, Sophie will be free to make more lucrative deals. What will those deals be? Her list of goals is as eclectic as Sophie herself. She told Erica Diamond that she'd written down her goals on a piece of paper and found many of them, from recording a musical album to traveling, relevant ten years later. Her approach, though, has changed. She told Diamond, I still have dreams, but instead of having them written on a little piece of paper, I live a little bit of them every day. I have found true peace and joy in everyday life because I do what I feel in the moment, not what is stuck on that vision board. If you need help with an eating disorder or know someone who does, help is available. Visit the National Eating Disorders Association website or contact Nita's Live Helpline at 1-800-931-2237. You can also receive 24-7 crisis support via text. Send Nita to 741-741.